So, I hear you like me to play old games. Greetings and welcome to a new Let's Play series. Welcome to Let's Play Outpost. Indeed, one of, well, not the most old, not the oldest game I've ever played, but certainly one of the oddest old games I've ever played. Outpost was a game created by Sierra Online for the DOS and Windows 3.11, I think. I mean, it, it played final on some Windows after that, but it was originally designed for that. And this, this game, well, I can't describe it as a good game. It's a functional game for the most part, but it has a special place in my uh, gaming uh, history, growing up as a gamer, for its ambition. This is a game that spoke to me on so many levels. Least of all the claims that were made. I mean, Sierra boasted that they had NASA technology. Now, I suppose in between the time that they developed the game, enough people were laid off at NASA that Technically, you could have anyone on your staff and have some sort of NASA connections. I'll say this, the cutscenes in this game do resemble somewhat the, the uh, computer-generated images that they did of uh, the, the various NASA missions they did in the 80s and 90s. But that's pretty much where it ended, because there's some, some leaps in uh, technology that are not explained at all by the game. So what is Outpost? Before I totally go off the rails here. Outpost is, well, in my opinion, one of the first colony building games in outer space. With an aim and has a premise that is absolutely mwah. You couldn't come up with anything quite so dire as in this case, because because I'm sure other people have tried making games like this, but this one, this one just spoke to me on some level. Because, you know, as a game, it details a disaster that in most disaster movies, we actually succeed in destroying the, 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 uh, the incoming problem, like Armageddon or, or Deep Impact. And we survived. You go on, the world lives. But what if it didn't? What solution would mankind seek then? Well, in any case, uh, rather than hyping it up too much, I should really let the game uh, go on and explain its premise uh, itself. Uh, just let me for a moment actually set up something else. Uh, that, that's going to be important later. And make sure that it's all set up in the right way. Yep. All right, let's start with the introduction. Now, the game will give me a warning. Yeah, this will play for a bit and I can't really do anything about the sound. I mean, I've already tried adjusting the sound levels as much as I can, but uh, the music and the voiceover are not always going to work together properly. I'm sorry about that. In any, in any case, here is the premise to Outpost. Enjoy. For thousands of years, Earth has been the cradle of human civilization. Now it's time to leave the cradle, or die in the attempt.
Computer projections show that Earth is about to be devastated by a visitor from deep space, an asteroid known as Vulcan's Hammer. With other planetary impacts expected, plans are made to leave the solar system. Probes are launched to look for planets orbiting distant stars. A crash program is set in motion to build a starship. The fusion drive that powers the starship is untested. The ship itself is only large enough for 200 colonists and the supplies that will keep them alive. Unfortunately, this fragile craft is the only chance for humanity to survive. A fuel station has been established to mine the atmosphere of Jupiter for hydrogen to power the starship.
for Sid. The words you wanted to hear, you have a go for Orbit Ops. Super, we're go for Orbit Ops. Ta-da! Ooh, quite dramatic, is not. Well, I suppose that's enough setup. Let's actually get into the game proper. All right. Uh, yeah. Greetings, Commander. Welcome to the virtual command environment. I'm the artificial intelligence who will be assisting you. Okay. What name do you use? Well, obviously. What name would you like to give me? Now, Aphrodite is the standard name that uh, is, is given to the AI, but of course will be... Well, of course, I'll be renaming her for a moment, so let's just uh, pick a proper name. Mm. Nah. Let's just go with that. What level of difficulty do you require? Now, <laughs> it is so easy to overestimate your own abilities here. I mean, I will be playing on medium, mostly because I don't want to be bothered with the tutorial or any unnecessary help messages, because I am not entirely certain those still completely work. I mean, in order to get this copy of uh, Outpost running, I essentially had to go to an Outpost fan site and find a version that still work that would work with uh, Windows 10. And trust me, I don't know how they figured out how to do this, but kudos to them. I will provide a uh, link in a doobly doo to the site that provided me, or well, provided me where I took it from. <laughs> I mean. I give them all praise for this, but I'm not entirely sure the site is actually still really active. In any case, I will be playing on medium, because that's really difficult enough as it is. I mean, does hard do anything? No. It's for automatic trucking. <laughs> if, you, if you read the manual to this game, and I have many times, uh, when they mention this particular function, they say, always leave it on automatic, which leads me to think, why make it different then? Why give me another option? And this game has suffered some major setbacks during development and well, given that they had to create a game that had a Dwarf Fortress level of complexity for some of the content, never mind the final execution. I mean, when this game first came out, it was broken to all hell. They had to release a patched version later on that more or less fixed uh, most of the problems, but even then, it was clear that much, many parts of this game were just left incomplete. Pitchy. Would have liked to have seen how that would have turned out, but alas, nobody is making a game like this nowadays. It's all much more less cerebral, I suppose. But anyway, we'll go on medium difficulty. We already have some basic data about distant star systems. You may select up to four of these star systems in your search for a habitable planet. Right. Now this is just a basic scouting mission. These are stars that the game says have a decent chance of having planets around them. We don't know exactly how much of a chance, but let's just say some planets have no chance. Like for instance, we have a star over here that has a mass that's twice the mass of the sun. That's what this means. That one doesn't have stars, I think. I mean, I could look it up, but uh, I mean, I do have the page open actually. Let's see. Alpha Aquilae, no habitable planets. Nope. Not happening. 
Right, but in any case, let's just focus on planets that have a slightly better chance. Like Delta, Delta Pav Pavonis. Yeah, Delta Pavonis is a mass that is roughly equivalent to the Sun. So, there's a good chance. We have also got Sigma Draconis. Slightly smaller, but still a good chance for a Sun. Uh, sun like quality. Let's see. Tau Seti. Also a good candidate. And what was the other one? Let's see. Um, well, the all Alpha Centauri's have a good chance. Um, I'll just go with the name that I like the most. Epsilon Eridani. Ah, come on, game. Work with me here. Epsilon Eridani. All right, which is a mass of 0.8. Right, let's launch. Now you must decide how many people you wish to save from death and what supplies will be required to support them. Any mistake at this point will doom you and your colonists to certain death. Have a nice day. I just love how much they like to rub it in your face. Yes, it is indeed possible to completely bugger up the entire setup from this screen. <clears throat> Let's try not to do that. Now, currently I have a hundred colonists on board and two colonist landers, two cargo landers, two seed factories, one tokamak reactor. Let's make that two. Uh, I think I'll take a solar satellite and a solar receiver array. I'll take a, a geological probe, a weather satellite, an interstellar probe, communication satellite, an orbital observer, and a ULBI probe. Yeah, that'll do. Actually, let's take another receiver array. Right. Now, let's bring some food on board. Now you can set up your ship to take 200 colonists. That's no problem. Just make sure you bring enough colonist landers in order to actually bring them down to the plant. That's just a little bit something you should keep in mind. Actually, let's, let's bring 150. Let's another colonist lander. Yep. All right, let's have some food. Now the food, if it's calculated correctly, one unit of food can supply 10 people for uh, with food. I don't know how that's... It's not mentioned anywhere, really. You just have to figure this out from raw numbers. So this game is really good at obscuring how things work. And I'll suppose... Uh, and I'll put the rest into life support. We have some weight remaining, but no funds. All right. The Lunch. VLBI probe data have arrived. Now, we can only go to one star. Pity, eh? So we have to pick now. We can't pick any of the stars we have not sent any probes to. Let's see. Delta Pavonis. Delta Pavonis. Has a staggering probability of planet habitability of 0 0.057. Whereas Epsilon Eridani. Epsilon Eridani. As 0 0.033. Sigma Draconis. 0 0.36. Tau Seti. Sigma Draconis. Ah, so now comes the question. Where do we want to go? Um, let's actually have a look at the chart again, because I want to go to the right place. Um, what planet type is that again? Uh, Alright. Now, I stop that. I want to go to a place that I am sort of familiar with, so I'll... Want to go to Sigma Draconis. 
The fueling process is complete. You now have the option to commit your starship and your colonists to an interstellar journey. Yeah, let's do that. First, we send out the interstellar probe. Pressurize the fuel system. Launch. Launch. Right, that will give us some information when we arrive. And now, the Starship. Pressurize the fuel system. Bring the reactor to full power. And I will see you all next time. Thank you for watching.